This video explains the internal and external anatomy of a dicot seed and also a monocot seed. I will use a Visha faba, that is a broad bean seed, it's a dicot seed, and I will use a maize seed, which is Zia maize, and that's a monocot seed. The dry seeds are more difficult to use for this experiment so what I've done is I have left some seeds in water for 48 hours so that they can imbi imbibe water. Also for this video I will use some iodine you might not be able to see the label there but that is iodine stain and it stains starch a black colour. this video it would be really helpful if you opened your manual um, and took a look, look at this diagram. So it's a diagram of the external and internal anatomy of a broad bean seed. One of the first things to notice about the seed before it has been put in water and the seed after it has been put in water is the size. So a broad bean seed is usually, when it's dry and in storage, it's that size. But after 48 hours in water, it actually has swelled. And the reason for that is the starch in the seed, it's almost 100% starch, these seeds. And starch is a hydrophilic polymer, meaning that it readily bonds with water. And so evolution has seen to it that a germinating seed that is packed along with lots of starch can get enough water to germinate. You might see something like this in everyday life. So when, for instance, you boil your pasta for dinner, your fusely pasta will be roughly half the size when it's dry and then double the size when it's boiled. Pasta is nearly 100% carbohydrates and starch. So this shows a real world example of how water loving or hydrophilic starch is. Okay let's get busy looking at the anatomy of these seeds. So this is the external surface of the seed and you can see that there is a blackened stripe across the bottom of the seed and at the side of the seed there is a swelling. So first of all the outside of the seed that is the testa. Okay, that's the testa. And the testa is the seed coat. In here at the side swelling on the side of the seed is where the radical would emerge or the young root. On this black stripe at the bottom of the seed is called the hilium. So it's the hilium. And the hilium is the scar that is left behind after the seed was taken out of the seed pod. Okay, so it's like a pod scar. What you won't be able to see with the naked eye is a small microscopic hole at the corner of the hilium called the micropile. And the micropile is the point of entrance of water. Okay, so water will imbibe through this micropile also to a certain extent through the testa and once water can enter the seed the germination process can be kicked off. The next thing we need to do now is take the seed coat off. So very simply you can stick your nail into the seed coat and peel off this brown, almost rubbery layer. Okay, and we'll discard that. So here you can see what the swelling looks like under the seed coat. So what we're looking at there is the radical. Here it is in your diagram. And when we take the seed coat off, we can see that the seed is actually in two parts and there is a natural cleavage down the middle of the seed. 
this is one cotyledon because remember this is a dicot seed and the other side is the second cotyledon and we can very gently pull them apart to see the internal anatomy of the seed. So one cotyledon, cotyledon number two. So here we have one half of our seed. And you can see obviously we've removed the testa. We've identified the cotyledon. And this is the cotyledon here, it's one of them. The pumule and the radical are the other two parts of the seed we must look at now. So if I can just zoom in here a little bit. This here is the pumule. See it here in your diagram. It's the pumule. And here is the radical. In between the pumule and the radical is the embryo the embryo, the embryotic seedling. The whole thing is called the embryotic seedling. So for germination to occur, water has to move through the micropile and it starts to move up through the seed and it hydrates, it starts to hydrate the starch and also there's a layer all around the seed called the alluluron layer. And that's a layer of enzymes and once they're hydrated they become active and they start to kick off many processes. You will have heard about this in lectures but one of the processes it kicks off is the gibberellic acid pathway. It's a plant hormone. And gibberellic acid is responsible for seed germination. It also starts to hydrate the starch and that's why you can see a seed that's increased in size once it's been in water. Germination can be deemed to have occurred when the radical starts to emerge from the testa. You can see a really nice example of it here where one of the seeds that I put into the water has actually already started germinating. So you can see the radical has broken its way through the testa and of course, once the radical can emerge, it can absorb even more water and draw more water into the seed to hydrate more enzymes and hydrate more starch. And the amylase will get to work to break down the starch into glucose. The embryo can use to drive the growth. So the, one of the most important parts of seed germination is making sure that this radical emerges because that really kicks up the speed of the germination process. After the radical has emerged, the next thing to emerge will be the pumule. And you will see this in your growing experiment number three, if you keep a close eye on your pots, you will see that this pumule comes up and out, but it will be curved over for a while. So it will be curved over like this. And the reason for that is that it will be protected as it moves up through the soil so these leaves here will be protected as they move up through the soil and then eventually when they get up to the top of the soil over here they can open out and they've been protected. So you will see that, really good examples of that when you do your growing experiment number three where you grow your broad bean seeds in peat or in peat and soil. What we will do next is our starch test. Okay, we'll do our starch test. For this test we need a control and we need a test subject. So in this case this cotyledon will be our test subject. That's the one we're going to pour the iodine on. And this one will be our control. Before you use a stain it's a really good idea to just take note of the colour of the stain before you use it. So for instance, this iodine is in a brown bottle. But we just need to make sure the stain is definitely brown. Take a little drop into a glass bowl or a Petri dish. And you can see that, yes, it is a sort of light brown colour. 
So our positive stain for starch will be this light brown colour changing to a black or sometimes even the black and purple colour. We are ready now to complete our stain. So remember this is going to be our test subject and this is going to be our control. Our control is needed because we need to be able to compare stained with unstained. So we simply just find our stain, drop a couple of drops of Hiding on there, just need enough so that the seed is covered, and then we'll need to leave that for a few minutes. After around about 10 minutes in our iodine stain, we can see that one hemisphere of our dicotyledonous broad bean seed has very nicely stained, positive for starch. So you can see that this brown colour, brown colour of the iodine, has actually now changed to a black purple colour. You can see that the centre of the seed is certainly a darker colour than the outside of the seed here. And I was saying earlier that the outside of the seed is where the alluron layer is, which is a layer of enzymes. So it runs all the way out here, all the way around and actually up here around our embryonic seedling. So it's slightly less staining in that area. There's also an area that hasn't been stained in the middle. That points to an area that is not rich in starch. Compared to our hemisphere that hasn't been stained, you can see this structure more clearly and also this area around the edge that's not so darkly stained. So we can safely say that this seed, this broad bean seed, is packed full of starch. The next seed we will look at is a monocotyledonous seed, sometimes for short called a monocot seed. We have here a zea maize seed. This spot here is the helium, or where this kernel the seed kernel was connected into the cob. So it is a little bit like the helium that you see on the broad bean seed. Okay, so there's the helium there. There is actually a front and a back to these seeds and it's very difficult to see in the seed packet but where you can see it really clearly is when you look at sweet corn. So this is just two kernels of sweet corn taken from my freezer and you can see there's an area around here so I call that the front of the seed and on the other side of the seed there's actually no particularly different area here okay. so you can see when you turn this over it's sort of clear whereas on this side you can see a structure Now this is where the embryotic seedling is. It's sort of orientated to one side of the seed instead of being in the middle of the seed like a broad bean. And when you cut a one of these sweet corns across the middle, you can see that that darker yellow area here, this triangular darker yellow area, is actually a transverse section of the embryotic seedling. So for me to be able to show you an embryonic seedling and therefore the anatomy of zea maize, I need to cut a window in the front of the sweet corn 
I can actually do it here on this maize seed. So I'm going to cut a window in the front of the sweet corn. To be able to visualize the embryonic seedling inside the monocot seed like VMA, like ZMAs in particular, you need to cut the window in the front of the testa. So the testa is the seed coat. And I need to cut a very thin section off the front of this just to take off the testa so that I can see or start to see, start to uncover the embryonic seedling inside. What we do is very carefully, making sure we don't cut our fingers is to take a very thin slice off the front of the monocot seed, this maize seed, until eventually you will uncover the embryonic seedling inside. Okay, so here we have our embryonic seedling. Here we have our embryonic seedling. There's the pumular at the top and the radical is down here towards the bottom. All the rest of the seed is all starch. All starch inside in the test there. So here we have a situation where the embryo, the embryonic seed, is embedded inside in the starch. The starch will swell as the seed imbibes water. And the same germination processes are, are kicked off. Things like the gibberellic acid pathway and those enzymes, those amylase enzymes being activated in, in the alluron layer in here in the seed, which will break down the starch and make the glucose available for this embryo to start its germination and growth. As part of this experiment I placed a maize seed into some tissue and after five days in damp tissue the maize seed had started to germinate. So there you can see the radical is starting to pop out the bottom of the seed and the shoot has started to pop out the top of the seed there. In monocots there is a structure called the coleoptile which covers the shoot as it moves up through the soil for protection. You can see the coleoptile very well in this photo. Eight days after germination, this is what the monocot seedling looks like. So you can see that the root has grown even longer as it moves down through the soil to collect more water to drive germination further. And you can see that the coleoptile is a little bit longer now and that the shoot is starting to pop out the top of the coleoptile. Finally, 12 days after germination, this is what this, the young monocot maize seedling looks like. So you can see that the coleoptile has an elongated and that there's a green tip of the first shoot that is popping out the end of the coleoptile there. Another thing to notice are the root hairs. When you zoom in on this photograph, you can very clearly see the root hairs. They are the small woolly type outgrowths that are growing perpendicular to the main root, which is growing down out of the seed. And the main function of all of those many hundreds of root hairs is to increase the surface area for water absorption. Mm -hmm.